Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're going to keep working on intersection observers. In my last video, we created this kind of uh, transparent navigation where when you scroll and you get down to about right here, it um, gives it a background. In this video, we're going to do this thing down here with these cards. Once you get close enough, they slide in like that. All right, so if you are interested in intersection observers, go ahead and stick around. Let's jump right in. I've got our basic setup here like we used in our last video, and it's once again using Parcel, which if you haven't watched my video on Parcel, I'll put the, a link in the description. But uh, basically Parcel is going to watch this index.html file and any file that is linked in here, it'll compile it if it needs to, like this CSS, um, SCSS down to CSS, it'll minify our JavaScript, grab our images, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what I've got set up here. And as you can see, I've got these cards in these areas. The kind of the only real thing we're doing here is triggering stuff with uh, a CSS class. So you'll notice our card here is set to opacity of zero. And if I were to come down here, you see I can't see them at all. And I've got, so let me go ahead and change this just so you can see them a little bit at least. Um, you can see them just barely faded in there. And then I actually have them translated down 100 pixels got a transition on it and then whenever we toggle on this fade class it'll move it to an opacity of one and translate them up back to zero uh, you know where they should be kind of in the first place so let's go ahead and move this back down to zero so all we need to do is write an intersection observer that will toggle on this fade uh, class so this is what we worked on last time I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much so I won't explain quite as thoroughly but you can go back and look at previous at the previous video if you have more questions um, but what we're going to do is go ahead and come in here and we're going to first of all grab those cards so let's just call them cards and we'll do a query selector all and they were just called card all right now I should probably put this at the top of the rest of the the observer or the uh, constants that we grabbed but just for clarity's sake we'll say this is the card section or whatever or whatever here down here okay now we need to do a few things and if you watched the last video i kind of explained this more thoroughly but we need to write a card observer all right this will just observe the cards and then that card observer will take two things now last video i broke them out these op this option and the callback function you can actually include them directly in here, but it just kind of makes for a, a little a little harder to read. So I like to break them out. So we'll do our card um, callback function and then our card options. And then finally, we'll need to actually run card observer on cards. <laughs> That's totally clear. Okay, so let's start with this card observer. So we'll just call it uh, card observer. And we'll say it's a new intersection observer. And once again, this takes two things. It takes a function and it takes options. This is our function. These are our options. Let's just call them something like card observer uh, callback. And then we'll call the card options card observer options. Now, when we save this, it's going to yell at us because uh, if we had our console open here, and we tried to call this, it would yell at us here because uh, we don't have any of these things yet. So let's create them. So we'll come up here and say const, and this will be our function. And for now, uh, let's leave that alone because I guess let's also come in here and do the options next. What do we call this card observer options? And right now we'll just set it to nothing. It's definitely yelling at us now, which this is one of the cool things about Parcel is it not only gives you, um, you know, an error in your actual console, but the web page itself shows you exactly where the problem is. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, it's got an emoji. So anyhow, we come in here and the card observer callback function. So what we need to do is we're going to pass in two things. Whatever we pass in, all right, we're not going to call it that, but and then we need to pass in the actual card observer. So here's what we're watching. Here's what we want to do. So these kind of reference each other. And I'm just going to keep this as an arrow function here. And we'll eventually do something of value here. Let's just call this like cards. Um, that might be confusing because of our cards here. Cards to watch. <laughs> Perfect. OK, so cards to watch. Uh, we're going to say for each card to watch, uh, 
let's grab the card to watch. And we're going to console log the card to watch. All right, um, now we haven't done anything yet. Let's do one more thing, which is we need to actually run the card observer on our cards. So we'll say cards. This is from this constant up here. For each, we're just gonna loop over these for each card. We're going to call the, that card observer, intersection observer that we wrote, and we're gonna observe the card. Okay, hopefully that is clear as mud. <laughs> And it's working, so let me kind of show you what's going on here. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, for each card, we want you to run this card observer. This card observer says, hey, I've got two things. I've got a function I'm running and options. Options so far is empty, set to nothing. That doesn't really affect us too much. But it is going to go ahead and run this function. This function says, hey, I'm watching something. It's watching whatever was passed in, which is this card. For each of those cards, I want to console log the intersection observer entry. These entries contain a bunch of things. They contain the intersection ratio, how much it's in, or whether or not it's intersecting, if it's visible, all the, the intersecting rectangle. Right now, none of this is intersecting, so nothing's happening. So what we can do is use this, just like we did up above for this uh, nav bar in the last video, and we can actually run an if statement on it and figure out if it's intersecting. So the easiest way to do that is to come in here and say if, uh, let's, what was that? We called it card to watch. Uh, I guess it's card to watch. Oh, it still grabbed that. Okay. Uh, if the card to watch dot is intersecting. And all we're going to do is we're going to say if that is intersecting, let's console log uh, the card to watch dot target. Okay. So as we come down and we scroll into view, now they're not visible right now, but you'll see it's actually giving us the target. Now the target isn't the intersection observer entry, it's the actual div. And so you see as we scroll down here, eventually they'll all pop in here. I think we've got one more down kind of at the bottom. Let's go ahead and zoom this out so it's not quite so intense. Okay, so what we wanna do is not console log that, but we wanna come in here and we wanna say card to watch.target, and that's where we're going to add the class list. We don't want to add it on the intersection observer entry. We want it, which would just be card to watch. We want to add it on the target itself of that entry. It's kind of like a click um, event listener. We don't want to add it to the event listener. We want to add it to whatever the target is of the event listener. So we'll say class list dot add, and we called that class fade, I think. So Let's come in here, and as we scroll down here, you see it's adding it just like that, which is cool. Now, here's the thing. If we come back up this way, they're just going to, you know, stay right where we put them because we haven't removed them at all. But we're actually still, um, we've got the intersection observer still watching. We can figure that out because if we come in here and we say console log card to watch, and uh, as we scroll, they're going to console log as they show up. And then every time we move, you see it's giving us more intersection observer entries. Even though we don't need them anymore, it's already faded them in. So we can actually call unobserve on that card observer. So we'll say whenever, as soon as you've faded it in, then go ahead and unobserve that card to watch dot target. Okay, so for that specific div, stop watching it. And now if I come in here, let's go ahead and do card to watch here again as console log. I shouldn't have deleted that. Um, so we can come in here and it's immediately showing up one more time. It'll show up for these final two. But now if I scroll up and down, it's turned off that observer. So it's not updating those anymore, which is what we want. We've got just one more thing to do. And I'm going to go ahead and close the console here. The final thing to do is there was, we created kind of a little delay in it on the example. So here what it's doing is as soon as it's in view here, it's starting to fade it in. But you see there's really not too much of that card in view when it's doing that. So let's go ahead and pass in uh, this uh, threshold for that card. Now we could do it with a margin, a root margin like we did in the last video. But in this case, I think the threshold makes more sense. We're going to say when 50% of the card is in view, 
Oh, and again, I keep adding <laughs> the semicolons. I did that in the last video too. Uh, as soon as you add, as soon as 50% of the card is in view, count that as finally being on the screen. So about right there, and then it scrolls in. About right there, and then it scrolls in. Now, you can do whatever you want with this fade class. I don't know, let's come in here and do something kind of stupid. Uh, <laughs> let's come in here and say uh, nth of type, or nth child, I guess. Let's do nth last child. There we go. And we'll do one or two first. So this is the second child, second to last child over here. For this one, we'll say, um, let's transform it, translate. Let's take that Y off and say it'll be like negative 50% and zero. This is left 50% and zero when it comes to the Y coordinates. And then we'll say, see it moving over there. And then we'll say, um, for the nth child, the final child, this is not the way you would do this. Uh, you'd probably add some kind of class if they were left or right. But I'm just showing you, like, you can do whatever you want with, with adding these kinds of classes. Here we do 0, or here we do 50, and then 0. So it's all the way over that way. Then what we can do is say on fade, for both of these, obviously they're still going to have that opacity from up above. But let's go ahead and translate... I guess we could do X uh, to zero, and we could just do the same on both of these. So I guess let's copy this down. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's re refresh the page, and as we come down here, now these are gonna scroll up, and these are gonna scroll on from the side. Okay, now you probably wouldn't do it like this. Like I said, you maybe would have a class like fade left, fade right, and add those to the various cards. But just so you can see that you can do whatever you want with these, um, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. Now, I would just warn you, most people don't love sites that are constantly like fading, moving, changing stuff constantly. So I would just use these kinds of fading things pretty sparsely and uh, just make sure it's tasteful. All right, don't blame me for your bad design. Um, but now you know how to use the Intersection Observer to move in these cards. We've got one more in the series where I'm going to show you how to basically hide a a submit button or something like that until somebody has read like your full terms of agreement. So I'm, I live in Utah. So that's why I've got this Utah national park. We're going to have like a, an agreement down below to basically not be an idiot when you go to Utah parks. All right. So if you're interested in that, stick around. And in a few days, I will post that next video. All right. Thanks so much and happy coding.